Hey everyone, Ross Kinson here. I've had three emails overnight about one thing, uh, and that's basically asking about how to sell high price, expensive luxury items. Now I can tell you um, my opinion, what works for me, it's always about community, developing that community. It works for me, it's worked for all of my clients. But let's go down, let's go and see if we can get hold of a friend of mine called Steve Higgins. He runs HR Owen, they sell Lamborghinis right here in London. Steve? Steve, Ross, hi. Yeah, good. I'm here, actually here just filming at the moment and uh, we wanted to come down and ask you a couple of questions. Would that be all right? Just for the, just for the guys at home, just super secret sneaky stuff. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, there we go. Let's go and see him. Okay, so we've come down here to HR Owen, with, which has got to be the most prestigious place in London to buy any kind of expenses car, and they sell here the most beautiful cars in the world, the Lamborghini. And I'm here with my good friend, Steve Higgins, who's here today, and he's going to go through a couple of these questions that we talked about earlier and see what his take is from a very, very luxury, high-end brand product. Okay, so, Steve, always good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, good, right. good to see you again. Good to see we're both wearing the same shirt. That's, uh, it's de rigueur here. <laughs> So um, probably for everyone here, it would probably help them just get a bit of an idea of your background, how you got into this, and uh, how do you end up you know, actually being the guy who sells the Lamborghinis? Mm, that's a very, very uh, good question. <laughs> and uh, I don't think we've got enough time actually to, uh, to really <laughs> outline that one, but boiling it down to the basics. Um, I guess for the last 20, 25 years, I've worked at, at this kind of level sure. with, uh, with, with many, many brands. Um, out of all of them, mm. I've worked for the longest time with Lamborghini right. because it is the best mm. and it is kind of my home now. Yeah. And um, I got into it by uh, good fortune, I think, probably. making. Mm. Right. Uh, but I put myself in a position where good fortune was uh, able to uh, <laughs> smile upon me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'd had enough of uh, the industry, if I were to be entirely honest, uh, okay. just over 10 years ago. Yeah, and no I was going to look to do something else in my life because I thought I was getting stale and, yeah. and really wanted another direction. And um, my employers at the time, they just said, look, don't go, don't go, don't go. We've Great. got Lamborghini. Yeah. Um, we're just going to go places with it. Wow. Got new models coming out and all the rest of it. Wow. And I still wasn't convinced. So they gave me a Diablo uh, for a month to use. As you do. Thank you. you. Know. Completely <laughs> fell in love with the car. And uh, it was the first car that Audi had uh, breathed on. And they really right. took that car that was a big dinosaur at yeah. the time yeah. and uh, really did something very very special with it and I completely fell in love with it uh, I said I'd give them a year mm -hmm. of uh, my time just to establish uh, Lamborghini okay well that year stretched into over a decade and what a decade that's been wow and now here you are I mean I mean this is the culmination of those, yeah. those 10 years that's sure got you here and yeah. it's been quite a journey so yeah over those 10 years you'll have uh, had some interesting characters coming in mm, and yeah. you know one of the one of the questions that we always get is how do you sell a high price ticket item mm. which to be honest was the reason why I thought of you mm. instantly and I thought mm. well let's you know you can't get much higher price than some of these cars so mm. I mean do you ever have guys coming in and you know haggling you on the price trying to get discounts or yeah I think um, the difficulty with or one of the challenges actually one of the many challenges of working at this level yeah is that at some stages price is never an issue mm. because uh demand uh, always exceeds uh supply okay. sure, sure um the danger of that is the fact that you can become perhaps a bit arrogant mm. a bit too overconfident mm -hmm. and um uh, and also you kind of lose your edge then really because you just sit back with your feet up on the table and, <laughs> uh, and wait for the money to roll we in. come to you. And Thank you. Yeah. And the thing is, I've been doing this long enough now yeah. to know that those uh, little windows of opportunity just disappear very, very quickly. Yeah. So yeah. those deals that are, in inverted commas, easy mm. to do mm. are still the ones that almost you have to work harder for, really, because right. that client's going to come back over and over and over again and he's yeah. gonna remember that first time if it is the first time that he bought that car from you okay. and if okay. you if you treat that that uh, client really really well in a very very strong market mm. he remembers how you're going to be treated in a, in a down market yeah. as well which is technically even better yeah the difficult side when you're dealing with price objection is when you're in a cycle where the model is uh, perhaps not so popular okay. and okay. of course with used cars as well yeah 
and with our lovely showrooms here in South Kensington, people expect that we're going to charge much more mm. uh, uh, for our cars. Yeah. The reality is, is we do an awful lot of our business now um, mm. uh, via uh, the internet. Mm -hmm. And if we price our cars higher than somebody outside of London, yeah. They're just yeah. not going to come. They're just, yeah. they're just not going to pick the phone up. So there has to be a price parity, mm. despite the fact we've got our overhead. So we have to work hard uh, with increasing volumes to make sure that we can make up the uh, the, uh, the shortfall there. Mm. Mm. Um, I think one of the benefits of of us as a Lamborghini dealer here, we're owned by uh, H.R. Owen. Sure. H.R. Owen, a very, very long established company. Yeah, yeah. And that gives us benefits of being able to offer cu uh, customers, particularly new clients, um, to become part of a community, love that. Which is a, great, which, which is a great word which you and I have talked about before, yeah. and, and it's yeah. and it really really means a great deal because mm. many products at this level talk or certain manufacturers talk about lifestyle, yeah, and they push lifestyle and push lifestyle. Yeah. Often, sometimes lifestyle has been written uh, by a, a steering committee somewhere <laughs> entirely away Some from focus group thank somewhere you very you much see, and, so. and it's not written by people that are actually living in the real world and yeah. people that are actually communicating with yeah. clients on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. and the one thing with Lamborghini because we're given a very uh, a, a blank sheet to actually work with our customers and actually mm. deliver uh, uh, what they uh, what they want yep. is uh, uh, that the, the buy-in mm. to HR and what we can give you with that sense of community yep. with events, just yeah. coming to the pub and having a few pints and just, it, it just yeah. or going to dinner, but, driving to Pamplona, yeah. running with the bulls, <laughs> all that kind of thing. And, yeah. and I would really, really like, I, I firmly believe that mm. we actually give each client that wants it, yeah, yeah, not sure. every client does, yeah. that feeling of community. And I think that's where you can actually sell uh, some price differential if there is one and mm. say look okay maybe there is a dealer actually yeah. up the road that will sell you the car for a thousand pounds cheaper yeah but this yeah. is this is what eventually you're going to forget how much you paid uh, for that car i see i mean for, for the, the price tags of some of these cars that's what you're really buying into isn't it it's that it's that that community and obviously the the beauty and the, the emotion that comes with the car yeah i mean i'm reminded of uh, the opening scene in uh, Reservoir Dogs, yeah, yeah. when they're talking about tipping the waitress, and they say, yeah. well, you don't tip the waitress at McDonald's, no. so uh, why should I <laughs> tip the waitress here that serves me food at this, at this restaurant? Exactly. And the, the thing is, is, is culturally, mm. when you walk through a door to buy, to, to, to buy a car, mm. you're supposed to haggle, yeah. because our culture says that, that, that's, that, what you that, have that, that that's what you have to do. Yeah. And so, even for people that are not used to buying cars mm. at this level, when mm. they walk in and say, well, look, the salesman's not listening to me when I'm actually wanting to, uh, uh, to have the car cheaper, <laughs> yeah. then you know, yeah. you've got to kind of yeah. climb back and actually show that you, you really are mm. not just buying the car, you really are buying a lifestyle. And yeah. that is very, very, very important. I think what we were talking about then, it's starting to come through with some of the, like your, your personal sales philosophy. Um, I mean, you know, we were in here a bit earlier and I uh, was watching Steve with a couple of people who, you know, potential customers and uh, your approach is a lot different to if I might, might describe it as like a traditional car salesperson mm -hmm. you know I mean yeah. some of them could be quite hard closing sure uh, you know because they have to yeah you know absolutely but yeah. uh, you know the stuff that you kind of do and the stuff that you demonstrate here um, is, is quite different to that which you know probably helps to develop that community mm. would you say that's true um, I think specifics mm. it, it, uh, do you know I uh, it's fundamentals yeah it's absolute fundamentals mm. and I, i'm going to use a term that because uh, i can't think of a, a, of a better one right now reinventing the wheel sorry okay <laughs> right. but you know yeah. don't do yeah. it Get, you know fundamentals fundamentals mm. fundamentals mm. you know really so you know you're, you're looking at turning vices into virtues yeah is, is exactly what you're doing yeah. so uh, you're encouraging the customer to uh, uh, to understand exactly what they're getting, mm -hmm. in where where it fits them, you yeah. know, their perception yeah. is is one thing. Mm. You know, reality is another thing. Despite the fact that perception is reality, I'm sorry, yeah. another watchword. No, no. What you need to do is just change their perception. Yeah, yeah. To the real reality. That's it. That's it. But, you know, it's, it's fundamentals. And one of the one of the things uh, that you did earlier was um, almost this reframe that we talk about, where um, very powerful, yeah. Which really powerful, and you know, Steve was saying a bit earlier about. How how you use it even even here with these you know really really beautiful cars but even some things need a reframe don't yeah. they to quickly change their opinion 
perception, as yeah. you say, of that reality Absolutely. to something much more in keeping with where you're, where Truly. you're going, to where yeah. you want the sale to go. Truly, and that is really, really powerful. Yeah, that is really powerful. Um, so probably just the last thing then. I always, uh, I'm always fascinated by kind of um, people's like first big sale. You know, first, yep. um, you know, first thing that really made think, wow, I, I can actually do this, or I've actually sold something. I mean, mm. was it a Lamborghini or what, what happened with that one then? Well, you, you did. You, you mentioned this um, a, a little while back, and I mean, over those ten years, I, I can pick some real corkers. That is for <laughs> sure. Um, but you mentioned the first one that I did, and I always remember the first one that I did, yeah. and, and and it was back to fundamentals again. Yeah. And when when I first started this uh, as a kid, I was I was a windsurfing instructor, and I just okay. believe it or not, <laughs> and uh, and somewhat browner then and less grey and somewhat fitter, <laughs> and uh, and I'd just come back from Italy. I'd lived in Italy for a while teaching windsurfing. Wow. I was this young kid, you know, and uh, desperate for a job, and so I, I started cleaning cars. That was that was how I started, you know. Wow. And uh, then I was talking to this guy, you know, he's an East End car dealer, you know, and all the rest <laughs> of it. And he said, oh, he said, I'll tell you something, you know, you clean money in your car. You know, you do that, right. clean money in your car. And uh, we had, we had inherited this business okay. and we had this uh, black um, SV and right. it was just looking really sad. Okay. And, and, and basically I was, I was at a loose end, all my prospects had done, I was doing everything to try and set up the business. Sure. And I just needed some some downtime really for, for my mind just to let my subconscious deal with what we were doing sort it all out. and I thought right do you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean some money into that car and I did and I came in my jeans and I got the cleaning wow. stuff and everything and I just detailed that car I spent like two days cleaning the car right. you know and whilst in that two days you don't really know a product until you clean it yeah, and trust wow. me. Is that's always a, a good, and, okay. uh, you know, and, and read whatever metaphor no, no, you no. want to into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a wide myriad of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I cleaned that car. So for two days, I was just there cleaning this car, cleaning this car. Person came on day three, saw it, fell in love with it, and bought it. Just so like that. That's it. Done. And so, so I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And and it was fundamental because wow. I was this teenage kid, again. But the only difference is between selling a used Mini Metro. Yeah, yeah. 850 quid yeah. you know I just sold like my first Lamborghini at what was it, like like 95 grand or 100 grand or what it was at the time so it's just a few noughts difference really yeah. fundamentals so it's the same absolutely basics absolutely the, the same, same basics. basics absolutely brilliant well Steve thank you so much for your time you're welcome okay guys there you go really quick and simple with some incredible experiences and some real key uh, secrets about how the pros do it okay I'll see you next time